Six steps on hypothesis testing. Population proportion, problem one. Six steps common to all tests of significance. Number one, state the null. This is usually the assumed value for the population parameter. It should involve an equal sign. State the alternative. This is normally the claim. This is what the researcher believes. It should have a greater than sign or a less than sign or a not equal to sign. State the type of tail. So that'll be a left tail, a right tail, or a two tail. Number two, state the predetermined significance level, alpha. Alpha normally is 0 0.10, 0 0.05, or 0 0.01. Number three, calculate the value of the test statistic. This will come from the data from the sample. If we are computing population mean, calculate the degrees of freedom. Number four, find the probability value, called the p-value, that corresponds to the calculated test statistic. The p-value can be found by using software, the calculator, or by using a table. Number five, determine what the p-value indicates. If the p-value is greater than alpha, then we cannot reject the null. The null is better supported by the data. The data results are not statistically significant. The data results are not beyond those expected by chance variation. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, then we reject the null and conclude the alternative. The alternative is better supported by the sample data. The data results are statistically significant. The data results are beyond those expected by chance variation. So the p-value determines the outcome of the significance test. Number six. State the conclusion in clear English. The template for the six steps looks like this. Step one, we have our null and the alternative and type of tail. Step two is our alpha level. Step three is the value of the test statistic. So this will involve a formula for population proportion. We use a Z and this is the formula. So p sub 0 is the null, the assumed value of the population proportion. x is the number of items that have the certain characteristic. n is the number in the sample. And p hat is x divided by n, the sample proportion. Number four, we calculate the p-value by using a table, stack crunch, mini tab, or a graphing calculator. Step number five, we determine if we fail to reject the null, and that happens when the p-value is greater than alpha. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, then we reject the null and we conclude the alternative. So we have a saying, when the p-value is low, H of O must go. That means we reject the null and we conclude the alternative. Step number six, we state the conclusion in clear English. Let's do an example using this outline. In a study of 11,000 car crashes, it was found that 5,720 of them occurred within five miles of home, based upon data from Progressive Insurance. Use a 0 0.01 significance level to test the claim that more than 50% of car crashes occur within five miles of home. So when you're doing a problem like this, you want to label the information that we're given. First thing is the 11,000, that's how many were in the sample. We're interested in a number of car crashes that occurred within five miles of home, and that was 5,720. The alpha level is 0 0.01, and the claim more than 50% of car crashes 
is the alternative hypothesis. So step number one, the claim is given in the problem. More than 50% of car crashes occur within five miles of home. Given this, we can write the alternative. P is more than 0 0.05. Now we can also write the assumed value of P. Then now we'll always have an equal sign, so P equals 0 0.5. Step number two, we have our alpha level, 0 0.01. Step number three, we will use the information from the sample to compute the test statistic. So we have X is 5,720, N is 11,000, P hat, the sample proportion, is X divided by N. So if we take 5,720 and divide it by 11,000, we have 0.52. Step number four, the p-value will come from this test statistic once we put the values in our z formula. Step number five, we make one of two choices. We fail to reject the null, or we reject the null and we conclude the alternative. If we fail to reject the null, we state there is not sufficient evidence for the claim. If we reject the null and conclude the alternative, we state there is sufficient evidence for the claim. Step number six, we want to state the alpha level first. Then we state if there is sufficient evidence or there is not sufficient evidence for the claim. And the claim needs to be in terms of the problem. So let's use technology to actually compute the test statistic and the p-value using StatCrunch. We go to Stat, Proportion Statistics, One Sample with Summary. We type in our x, type in n, we put the value of the null here, and then we choose greater than, less than, or not equal to. Then we hit Compute. The output is given and we can check to make sure our null and the alternative is correct. This is p hat. This is our test statistic and normally we round this to two decimal places and here we have our p-value. And StatCrunch is saying the p-value is less than 0 .0001. In Minitab we go to Stat basic statistics, one proportion, we select summarize data, we type in X, then N, we check perform hypothesis test, we put in the null, we click options, here's where we change the alternative, in this case we want greater than, then we need to check use test and interval based upon normal distribution that's using the Z. We click OK and in the session window we see this is our X, this is our N, here's P hat, this is our test statistic 4.20 and this is our P value. Now this does not mean zero, this means rounded off to three decimal places it's zero. So this is a small number. Using the TI graphing calculator we go to stat, then we move from edit to test. Number five is one proportion z test. We type in the null, 0.5, x, n, we choose greater than, and we hit calculate. The calculator gives us the z score, the test statistic. 4.20 rounded off and then here's the p-value. Now the p-value is written in scientific notation and basically 1.3637887e to the negative 5 is scientific notation means we need to move the decimal place five places over and the p-value is approximately 0.0000136. It is a very small number. So even though StackCrunch, Minitab, and the graphing calculator all have different values of P, 
and the big picture, we're going to come to the same conclusion. So using our outline, we have P equals 0.5. That's the assumed value of P. The claim is P is a larger than 0.5. This is a right tailed test because this is a greater than. Step number two, alpha is 0.01. Step number three, using the data from the sample in our Z formula, plugging in the values, we have 4.20. That's our test statistic number four. We have a right tailed test. So this area is our p value. And our p-value using what StatCrunch says is 0.0001. Step number five, so we say because the p-value 0.0001 is less than alpha which is 0.01, we reject the null and conclude the alternative. When the p-value is low, h of o must go. Step number six, at the alpha equal 0.01 level of significance, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that more than 50% of car crashes occur within 5 miles of home. Thanks for watching.